take off a lock and lock with the light commands. This also functions for your main entry door, so that unlocks and locks it as well. You have two other keys for the main entry door. You have this big square one and this round one. The round one's going to operate the lock for your door handle. So unlock the right, lock the left, and then the big square one is going to lock your deadbolt. So. That one. There's your deadbolt. Now if you do open it with the deadbolt, you're going to have to push it close until you hear it latch. for the front doors, lock the second time for your entry door deadbolt. That will not lock this handle. You do have a Milwaukee retractable step, so when you turn on the ignition or have the auto step off, so we retract out of the way for easier storage and going down the road. Now this does have an ignition safety on it, so if you do leave the step out, uh, Sorry, the step switch on, and you turn on the ignition, it will retract. Uh, we have a front compartment on this side, front side compartment. These locks here are going to be this little over key with the Leisure Travel LTV uh, symbol on it. Just push the button, you get this little key out. power your outlets on the unit when you are not plugged into the 120. Now when you need more power, you have a generator hooked on this, which is the owner generator that will allow you to run your air conditioner and your fridge on the 120 instead of propane. You still use gas for this unit, not propane. So if you need to run out of propane and you need to keep your fridge cold, you can turn on your generator, make it 120, keep your fridge cold running it on 120. Now with this here, this will run until you get to a quarter tank of gas, and it will turn off um, once the gas is to a quarter tank, not leaving you stranded out in the wild with uh, the gas until you're able to get to the nearest gas station to fill up, and then you keep on going about your merry day. All the way in the back here, you have your rear exhaust, you have your, uh, or, sorry, your furnace, you have your Truma Aqua Gun, this is going to be your water heater. So we have our water heater here. Our main switch for this water heater is right here. It doesn't matter if it's up or down, on is on. That's going to be the first thing that you're going to want to do once you get to your campsite. So you know that that's already in the on position and ready to go. Now currently this unit is winterized. So now we're not, I'm going to be able to show you properly the operation of it, plus I'll be talking through it. This little part here is what I call the duct fill. This is your main drain. I have a filter that goes right in here. Uh, as per Truma, you don't want to run any antifreeze through this, so you don't have to worry about that. I'll show you where the bypass is, and you will have to open it up uh, after you flush out the system so that there's no antifreeze that gets into this unit. Here, this is our Truma water filter, uh, which is kind of funny because it has this filter on it. These rings here, keep an eye out for any uh, cuts or anything on these, as this is the plug for the water heater. It says top on the top, keep that facing up, like such, bring this slightly up, push until it's completely latched. That plugs it and makes the filter for the Truma water heater itself. Uh, remember, don't leave this down, especially when it's cold out, you're going to be using the furnace, as you can burn it, that's a thing to kind of keep in mind here. Out here we do have the, almost the full awning. Now that's the 
this little awning is right here at the passenger door. That's right here. So you have out and in. That's only going to operate when you have the ignition off, as this awning does have an ignition safety switch. So if you have your keys in the ignition and your awning's not working, uh, roll of thumb, take the keys out of the ignition, put the emergency brake on, and then give it a few se seconds and you'll be able to operate it. Now we're off, so I can press and pull it out. Now this model does not have a wind sensor, so in high winds or decent winds, you don't want it to be open. Um, like mild breeze, fine. Now this unit does have the legs for it, so you can adjust the pitch, and it kind of gives it a little bit more of a secure. Now, uh, you can leave it open slightly without the arms, but I recommend putting them in each time so that it doesn't move around and uh, get potentially damaged if a gust of wind comes through, as it will help prevent it, but it won't stop it if you get a large gust. Now, these here, uh, I'm not sure if you can see what these awning like. Here, let me turn these off real quick. These orange tabs, this is the handle. Put your finger underneath that. And now we're going to pull this backwards. Now, if you look over this way, you'll see the foot that releases from this releases from underneath here. That allows me to lift this up to bring it out. Put out. I'm going to go ahead and push down on this handle. Pull this straightly out. You'll see that now this is able to rotate. So you're able to stake this in the ground if you wanted to, but this is able to be kind of like a regular uh, stick and tin camper. So what we do is we take this arm handle, open that up. We have this foot here, lift up on this bar, put this in, push this back until flat, and drop this bar. That locks it to the camper. Now that we're locked to the camper, I'm going to head push that up a little bit and push down on that orange handle that locks that bar in place. And I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. Now I have a little pitch on this, so I can bring it up straight. Now it's nice and fairly secure awning. And then uh, that's how you have your awning up. Now, after you're done, it's just reverse all the steps I just showed you. I'm going to close this up, and then we're going to go around the back and go around all the rest of the accessories on this unit. Uh, one other thing before we go over all that. So if you take this and retract this all the way in where it stops in the foot and close it, you're going to run into an issue. Where you can't put it in. So to combat that, you're just going to take this, push it out a little bit. Another key feature is don't put this in like such. Make sure these fins are in line with those ends. Now that it's slightly out, I can pull out the foot a little bit more. Bring that back. Bring this foot underneath until it kind of like latches in the end. Now that that's that way, I'm going to kind of push forward a little bit. Open up on that. Put one finger on this end. Other end over here. Bring this all the way out. And then I'm going to relatch this orange handle. That allows this to stay inside, not really bounce about, and it's secure left and right, and then up and down it's locked in. Now I'm going to repeat the same steps on the opposite side. All right, now that we put those arms away, another thing you want to do is make sure that this main entry door is closed when opening and closing. The reason being is, as you can see, the awning is touching the 
top of the door. Now that's going to reduce the life expectancy of your awning. So if we pop that back, you can keep this door closed. Now we're free and clear, and then we can retract this all the way. Okay, at the rear of the unit here, we have our uh, niche with our seven legs. Have our exhaust for our generator. Uh, we'll go over the generator maintenance in just a moment. Uh, we have our rear ladder. Now, our rear ladder is not accessible unless you have the extension on it. To put your extension on, you just go over the bottom rung here. Now, I'm 260 pounds, so this definitely holds me, as you can see. So you don't have to worry about it falling off. Now, when you're painting the unit, you want to be using uh, car wash. Now that's for the sidewalls and the roof. Now when you're cleaning the roof, be very careful as it becomes very slippery. Um, while you're up there, you're going to want to check your roof sealants. You want to check those every six months. Uh, I say after summer and spring, um, summer and winter as those are our most extreme seasons. Uh, on the very back here, we do have our backup camera. So that's integrated in our Ford dash system when we put it in reverse. We've got our LED rear lights all the way around this whole unit so you don't have to worry about your bulbs blowing out anytime soon or being dim. Uh, this home is on the opposite side which I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, let's go over some general stuff on the generator. So this is our Odin generator. We have our two latches. You turn those two upwards, pull forward, and lift up. Now this only has a little lift, so you don't have to worry about any latch there. What you're looking at in this location is underneath this little screw piece here. It's going to be an air filter. Uh, you're going to want to read your manual front to back on this unit so that you can follow the manufacturer's specifications of maintenance as these do have a maintenance schedule and a break in period. Uh, with this unit, you do have your uh, start and stop. So you hold it to the left to prime it. That's when the light turns on. Prime it for a few seconds. I'm not going to fight to talk over that. So, um, with this here, all you got to remember is keep fuel in the vehicle. I'd say run this at least once a week if you can, or at minimum once a month. The longer these generators run, the better they uh, run and last because that keeps everything nice and lubricated. Nothing gets all gummed up. I'd run this at minimum half an hour. Uh, most people say an hour, that gives you most on time. This will also help to keep your batteries fully charged. Um, this little cap here is your foil dipstick. You're going to want to make sure this is nice and tight as it's a screw with a uh, seal. So this has a little crosshair. Make sure your foil is in the crosshairs. Tighten that down. Only other thing you have to worry about is pretty much nothing. Everything is taken care of. You have your fuel, your air filter, and just follow your replacement schedules as per the own manual. Uh, one other thing is you might notice that this might hit a little bit here when you're trying to put it in. The trick to get that in is put this top in. Sorry. It just wasn't sitting down all the way. And in the left hand corner here, we have our propane out, uh, quick connect. So if you have an outside stove or whatnot, you can be able to hook up to here. This does already have the two stage pressure regulator on it. So all you need is the hose to your outside stove. Uh, put the quick connect in, bring up this black handle that allows flow through the line to your accessory. Uh, then we'll continue on the opposite side.
this compartment here. This is your large stand-up compartment. <clears throat> this home goes right on these holders, like so. In here, you do have some storage and a rack. So most people normally put their short cord up here, or they just put it down on the ground here. Your short cord is a 30 amp service. So that's right here. A 30 amp service gets plugged into this connection right here. So this does have the L on it. All you gotta do is match up your L on your short cord. Now with uh, Leisure, you don't really need to worry about a surge protector as they already have a surge protection system in line. And then we'll just go ahead and plug this into a 30 amp service. You can opt to get a 15 amp adapter. So that goes from this 30 to like a household receptacle. The only things you can't run on that is your microwave, which that takes 20, or your air conditioner, which has a start capacity upwards to, I believe it's uh, 30 amps. Oh, sorry, a little over 30 amps for like a split second, which can pop a household unit. Now, a standard 30 amp will have no problem for that split second because they run about uh, anywhere from 14 to 17 amps while in max cool. Now, on the end of that short cord, it does have a little blue light. Uh, over time, that may blow out. That's not a real problem as long as you're still getting 120 through, only because they're little micro LEDs. Now, uh, that's like maybe five, six years from now, so it's not a big worry. This unit also does have a slight uh, power delay as it checks voltages going in through that surge protector. So if you plug it in, you hear a little click. That means that it's now getting 120 into the coach. Right here, this is going to be our water closet. In our water closet here, we have our macerator hose. So this is your macerator end. That goes right on here. So this is where you put this into your dump station. When that's in the dump station, you're going to go ahead and pull the black barrel outwards like so. That's going to allow any toilet water to come to the macerator. Once you get it to the macerator, you go ahead and first off, you're going to remove this. We're going to see if there's any kind of grease left in the system. So you go ahead and pull, pull this. This one's a little cold today as the egg grease has uh, got a little thick. So that would allow the black tank to dump. After you're done dumping the black tank, you go ahead and hook the Santa Porsche here. That will clean out any uh, leftovers inside that black tank. You'd want to make sure you use RV toilet paper as that decomposes and doesn't paper mache as much. Now the key on that is making sure that you keep enough water in there prior to using it. So I'll flush it a couple times before uh, you go number two. Um, so after you flush it, everything kind of solids don't get dry with all the paper, kind of building up like a, a clay hut, if you will. Um, so to help that flush everything out, that's why we're gonna use our Santa flush to clean that out, allowing it not to foul up your valves and keep that maintenance on that tank proper. Now, with that as well, you're gonna to wanna to use the tank uh, maintenance uh, bacteria. It helps uh, eat up all the compost that's in there. So that's gonna be your flush there. After that's done, you can go ahead and close the black valve and go ahead and open up the gray valve. That's gonna be all your sink and shower water. Uh, the reason you do that last is so it helps keep everything as much as sanitary as you can get because that's going to be more soap, food waste, and uh, well, just only water. So that's going to help keep down the smell and everything after you dump the black tank. Um, next to that, uh, after you're done with that, you're going to close that. Uh, also, 
for whatever reason, if this was to fail, you can take a couple screws, you can take out the strap that holds this in, remove that, and this does have the gravity seal still on it, which this is the cap for. Next to the Santa plush, we have our cable hookup, so that's where our cable input's gonna go. Above that, that's our satellite hookup. This is our max rated pump switch. We have our water pump switch here. And we have our outside shower. This here is our winterization hose. We have a white pass through here. So we can pass through all of our hoses and cables so that we can keep this closed while we're camping. This is our water hookup. We have our outside shower. So to use our outside shower, we can go ahead and plug this in for it. And then you'll be able to push. So you have cold for cold, hot for hot. Now the hot's gonna come from the terminal water heater. So depending on the setting, it may be cold for a minute and then it will eventually get hot, or if you leave it in comfort mode, it will stay hot the whole time you're using it. Now this valve here is for this hose. If you're wanting to winterize the unit, it's as simple as putting your unit in bypass, putting this into the antifreeze solution, turning on the water pump. So you take this like so, turn on the water pump, and bring antifreeze to all of your faucets, hot and cold. Once you're done, put it to normal, what normal does is allows the water pump to take water from the fresh tank to the whole system. And internally you will drain that as well. So this hose kind of just hangs out in there. And this one there. Now this does have the light. That's going to be the same switch on the interior, which is red and illuminating, letting you know that the light inside the rear cabinet here is going to be on. Make sure you turn them right when you're done, so that keeps them nice and locked. This vent here is for refrigerator vent, so if you ever need to get to the back of your refrigerator and check a fuse, you can do that here. That's the top one, so that's where all the hot air is going to come out. This compartment here is for your propane. So I'm going to hold this up because normally you won't have this open unless you're filling it. So you have your shutoff valve right here. So you turn this to the right to turn it off. Turn it to the left to open it up. This here is going to be your propane gauge. This here is where you fill propane. And this is your bleeder for the propane. So you want to always make sure that's uh, tight and not leaky or driven. And then the white piece up top there, that's your LP regulator. This is under the bed compartment. Another large area to get to. And then you have another large compartment here, which is awesome to keep your chairs in. And we have our sewer hose. Now, this is the sewer hose for the gravity drain if you were to remove the macerator. So, this has its own home, collapsible, and keeps everything nice and neat. And that's all of the exterior departments and cabinets. And then uh, I'll meet you inside and we'll go over of the full interior and all the cabinets and accessories. All right, so at our entry door here, we have our fire extinguisher. This is our main battery disconnect. So you're going to want to turn this off when you're not using the unit or you're going to not be in the unit for a long period of time without being plugged in to 120 uh, as your batteries will drain and die. This here is your main switch panel. So that's going to be your ceiling lights, your overhead accents, your 
of exit baggage. So the exit baggage is that one switch I was talking about for behind the unit and in your water closet. The assist handle, which is obviously this one right here. You have your porch light and your awning light. Uh, and you have your master on and off so this can turn everything off and turn everything back on. Now, the lights with the up and down arrows means you can hold that light switch and that will actively dim the lights. Now, the cool thing about that is if you hit the master light off and turn it back on, it's going to be at your same preset. To, so if you want to bring back up light, you have to recycle until it goes all the way bright again. Uh, above the entry door, we have our secondary panel. This is going to have our Go Power Solar Controllers uh, page, our Xantrex Freedom X controller. Uh, the only thing you really need to worry about this here is you can read your battery voltage and your battery state. And this little button right here, push that on to use the inverter when you're not plugged in the shore power to get 120 to certain outlets. Not every outlet will work off of this. Uh, next to that, you have your Truma AquaGo. This has a little lip on it. That's your dial indicator. So in the center, you have off. Up one is comfort. Uh, up all the way at the top is eco. Uh, down below one of off is um, electric uh, defrost, meaning it will keep the water temperature at 40-ish degrees, and then clean. Don't put that all the way down and clean unless you have to, as that's a two-hour process. And we have uh, next to that our battery heat. So this uses the lithium batteries in this unit, so they are temperature sensitive. So if you're going to be camping in cold weather, you're going to want to make sure that you have this on. Uh, these batteries do have a temperature lockout and stops taking the charge once you reach uh, a certain temperature. I believe it's lower than 46 degrees of internal battery temperature. So let's say you brought it into a warm shop. It could take a couple hours for the insides of that battery to warm up. This helps keep that internal battery temperature warm so that they can take a charge. And the uh, vice versa, it's the opposite with heat. They can get super, super hot. If they're super super hot on the internals, they can um, uh, go into over temperature lockout. So going from there, um, you can read the manuals on the Go Power. Read that front to back so you can understand all the options of that. Uh, the only thing you gotta really know is you can see your battery voltage. You hit uh, V. You can see what your amperage input from your solar panel is. Hit it one more time. You can see your battery consumption. One more time, you can see kind of like a trip meter on a car. You can see how many amps have been put in through the last time. So you're gonna to want to keep a track of that so you can see how many amps you were putting in the day. Um, that's pretty much what you really need to know with this. Uh, you can mess with the settings on the Freedom X uh, and mess it up pretty good. So just remember off and on, really. Uh, if you read the manual front to back, that kind of will give you a better clarification on how to change things if you need to, or if you want to check out how to. Uh, our entry door. The screen door, we know how to use a screen door. We have our MCD blind with magnet, which holds that in place. Uh, aft of it, we have a two window with its opening and closing. Uh, pieces here. I can't think of the, the word for them. Uh, but these are nice windows because you can leave them open when it's raining because it has its own uh, reflection of it so it doesn't bounce back. We have our Dometic two burner stove. So to operate this, we can turn this to the left to the lightning bolt, push into place, and we push down the, on the igniter, which is electric. there we are. Now after these, you run these for a while and run, uh, have a pot on it, you don't want to be closing this right after as this te is tempered glass and can shatter. Uh, underneath that we have our drawer. Our drawer already has a uh, built-in uh, silverware organizer. Uh, we have our remotes in there at the current time. Uh, you have large drawers all the way down. Now, these are only uh, held in with the drawers, no actual latches. So, you're going to want to make sure that you don't load those up too much because in transit they can open. 
Uh, I'd recommend putting large uh, pots and pans in the cabinets so that they don't fall out in transit. Now that's all the way down. You have the super deep wardrobe here with a little backstay in the right hand side. And we have our pull out table here. So this pull out table has two cup holders. Like so. So you can split it in between the two and then move it around easily. And then rotate this all the way inwards. Like so. It's going to take a little practice to get that 100%. Then we have our power distribution block, which is going to have our 12 volt fuses. So the fuses are labeled on the piece here, which are right here. And then we have our 120 breakers, and they're labeled as such. A uh, little storage area. This is kind of where I would recommend to keep uh, heavy pots and pans. Uh, we do have the nice flooring uh, lights. Um, they become more apt. We have our microwave. It's like a microwave, but it also has convection in the grill. Um, the grill does have a little tray, which you can use to elevate and cook a pizza. Makes a really good pizza that cooks really well. I have one this exact one at home. We have nice storage above head. Now that's all the way forward and aft here. We have our kitchen area lighting here, our kitchen sink, our towel rack, our hangers. Now these are removable, so you're able to move them front and for, uh, forward and back. Um, underneath. The sink. This is where our water pump and our bypass valves. Currently, the unit is in the bypass. Um, every hose is labeled, so if you follow the Truma uh, dewinterization and winterization, right now it's in winterization, so you're going to go opposite other than uh, the D line, which is this one. This one here is the only one you're going to keep closed after you have cleaned and flushed the unit. And then you're going to open uh, the clues. So you're going to put these like such. So that would be inline is open, that's closed. So currently, this is your mixer. So currently, that's closed, that would be open. So you're going to leave this one closed, open this one. We have a red one here. Nope, nope. It's kind of hard to. Hard to do and shoot at the same time. So you have one back here behind this pipe and one above that pipe as well. Uh, you're going to open those in line with it, and that's after you have already uh, clean and cleared the lines of all any crease. Uh, you do have a trash can here. Uh, underneath our microwave, we have our genetic refrigerator. So with the and freezer. I'm going to open up on both sides. Now with this fridge here, you're going to want to remember to grab it kind of like lower in the center so that the latches both open and close properly. And you want to make sure that the door is all the way closed as it won't let you open it. Now that the reason it didn't close all the way is because it does still have the covers over top of the these here. So you want to make sure that your stuff doesn't bulge out too much, preventing you from opening it, like so. All the way aft, we have our sliding door. Now the sliding doors for the bathroom to unlock this from transit mode. You have this little foot latch right here. Push that down, and then you can close the door. This door does have a latch. So if you need to, you can lock yourself in the bathroom and push it all the way back. It does have a magnet that helps hold it in place and this lock. 
this side we have our dramatic toilet. Sorry, our yeah, dramatic toilet. It's all nice and ceramic. It's very well built. This also does have the sprayer as well. Now the sprayer and the toilet only operate when you depress on this. I'm not gonna depress it all the way because that you want to leave a little bit of water in there uh, so that it, you don't have smells come up. Now this is brand new, it's not going to have smells, but we just kind of keep that practice the same. We do have nice storage in here. So you have your water pump and bathroom ceiling switch right here. So you're able to put Hang your towels on this side. And then we have our shower right here with our door for the shower. So you're going to want to hold this and press in to release it. Bring it over and let it latch on this very edge here. Uh, we have our shower, standard shower, hot and cold mix. Shower head holder. We have our shower light and a towel rack. So after you're done taking a shower and you need your stuff to dry, or you could use it as another closet after everything's dried. Uh, above me, we have our max air vent fan to open it. I'm gonna push that switch. Fan will automatically turn on. You have your speed control here, one being the lowest, zero being off. Three being the highest, and you can just turn off the fan there as well. And then when you want to close it, you can do so by switching that the opposite way. Then we've got our bathroom sink. These here can be switched out with each other, whichever you'd like. We have our toilet holder here. We have our bathroom nearby, which is on this side here. And we have a little shelf here. Um, the bathroom light can also be dimmed as well. So for those late nights, you'll be able to turn that down so you don't blind yourself when you turn on the bathroom light. Um, We'll go over the Firefly touch pad then, and the front bed system. All right, so this here is your uh, touch pad. So this is going to give you all your data on everything. So you have your propane, your black tank, gray tank, fresh tank. Black tank has antifreeze in it. You have your water pump. Uh, we have our lighting, our temperature control, our house voltages, our generator start and stop, and our auto gen start here as well. We have our home, which this is our home. We have our lighting page, which is gonna be all the lights inside units. We have our auto gen settings. So I personally wouldn't mess with these. Uh, you can just change your PMs and AMs for your quiet start and stop times. You can see what your gen hours are, your triggers for low voltage or uh, AC load, meaning if you turn on your air conditioner, it will turn it on. Uh, right now it's disabled. To enable it, you push enable, and then you're gonna have to hold in the enable button. Make sure that you are in, sorry, not in a garage when you're doing this. So pretty much it's a safety feature so you don't kill yourself. And then to disable it, you only have to press it once. This here is your temperature control. So this is going to be our air conditioner, our heat pump, our furnace, or you can set it to auto and just pick the temperature. You can pick the temperature up and down here. Left one is your set. This one here is your actual. Uh, you have your fan speeds. Auto to turn it off. Low and high to just turn on your fan. This one is our settings. So we have cleaning mode, which will allow you to wipe it down and not touch a bunch of buttons and mess things up. We have our switch panel info, so you can see that everything is connected and everything. So all the little black pads have a little uh, battery in it, which you can take them off the wall, replace the batteries, and you can tell the status of them here. 
and then we have our auto dimming so this here will dim per time uh, this unit does allow a mobile app so you can have a mobile app on your phone to operate the whole system you can select uh, if you're having problems with the unit you can check if everything's operating green means it's on and going we have our G12 so you can see what's on and what's off we have our floor pan plan and we can set our time to 1224 and uh, add and subtract time you can see your virgins and your logic controller version now with our mobile app here we're gonna go ahead and hit the mobile app right here so I have to enable my Bluetooth on my unit So now that I enabled it, I can hit scan. Oop. So it found it. I'll just make sure it's reading the same. Select it. Now to authenticate, you're going to have this pin down here. You're going to put the pin in. Press authenticate. Now it's syncing to your phone to this unit. Now it's going to have all the same things that I see on the home screen here. So I can check my house voltages, my chassis voltages, turn things off and on, change my climates on this unit. And I'll have my lighting page, my temperature, and my settings so I can check everything. Now, if it's not properly uh, operating, you're gonna wanna say uh, update, and then it installs the update to the unit. and then your unit should operate properly. So while that's updating, if I go to here, you have you can set these ones. You have your master offs and ons. You can turn your Porsche light on and off there. And everything else here as well. Um, and with the up and downs, you can actively dim. Um, so just because I don't want to make it overly redundant and do it for every model, I'm going to have my uh, video person uh, kind of splice in another Wonders front end. Now this is a different model on the back from the brand half back, but from the brand half frontward is the exact same. So you don't have to worry about the motor or the, the chassis side. Um, so if you see a little bit of discrepancy in color and or uh, what's behind the seats, that's kind of why. Um, we're going to go over this and then bed. So this is your TV rewrite right here. With this TV, we pull it down on this strap here. This can come out like so. So right now we're on bunny ears. Now the bunny ears. On this one is up here so this has two little dots right here so if you want to use cable on either side there's two little black buttons you press those once those lights are off that means you're able to get cable in from the cable port but with them on you won't get cable through this system here now you have your entertainment you have your HDMI uh, to the TV so if you wanted a secondary uh, DVD player or dish, you'd be able to use the HDMI all the way to the TV there. Uh, you have your roof exits here, so if you wanted to get a mobile satellite, you'd be able to put that on and you'd be able to get through here as it's already prepped for. Um, it just does not have the satellite dish up top. Uh, this has the exit set. Now the exit set is the line that goes all the way to the exterior in the water closet. Up top here, we do have our Blu-ray player. Now that's going to be this sunny remote right here. So if you're laying down here, you might have to do the old school turn it up like this to actually get to it, as there is a small lip here kind of in the way. But it doesn't get in the way of the DVD player, so you're able to still put your DVD in. Like so. Now this does have a JBL sound bar on the very top of it here. Now you can just 
turn on here like such, or you can use the remote, which does the really same thing. Come here. There you are. What? Now all your sound for the TV goes through the sound bar. This also, you can pair it with the Bluetooth and everything. Uh, I'd recommend following the instructions as it tells you which indication of the light on the top here does. Um, so that's Bluetooth, that's AUX, that's optic, and that's TV. Now the TV one is the optic is the TV one, so you're going to get your best sound quality through that. Um, and then to put the TV back, pull that behind that. Firmly push back until it latches. Uh, Tend to close that. Now I'm going to put all your remotes up top here. And with the TV, you have to change it physically through the TV to go through cable or through air. Um, the rest of these cabinets are just regular cabinets, so you're able to put whatever you like into them. Above me here is the skylight. Now the skylight is also a large vent. To press on this, pull down. You can bring it all the way up. Do not operate the vehicle going down the road with this open as it can be shattered. And push that up to lock it. This also has a blackout vent and a screen vent for it. So you're able to leave it open and not worry about the bugs and skeeters coming in. I recommend leaving these open when you're storing it. You can get uh, a piece of locket. One reason I recommend that is over time and over my years as a uh, RV technician, I have seen these slightly sag over years. Uh, and then when you go to close it, you can see these all pinched up. So I recommend leaving them open as such and put a block on this or a cover if you're planning on storing this for a long time. Uh, this here is our Leisure Travels books and pamphlets. That's going to have everything that you have in this unit in this binder with its own brochure. Inside the binder, you're going to see everything from your water heater through your power converter, through your uh, surge protector, all through here. I'd fill out all your warranty cards, meaning you as the customer, fill out all your warranty cards. Uh, that helps you keep everything in warranty and registered. Uh, on the very back here, you can personally see the technician that has uh, prepped your unit from Leisure Travel. And it has all your uh, serial room numbers in this uh, unit with all of its model numbers and everything if you ever need a replacement. Also inside here, you're going to have uh, your JBL manual. Um, that's where it is. In the back. We have our Freedom X Series Charger uh, info and everything like this. So this is the other one I'd suggest reading from the back. Uh, the little pamphlet here is for your uh, TV. And then I'd highly suggest reading your Truma manual from front to back as that's going to give you everything you need to know. Now in your Truma manual here on page 31, this has your Comfort Plus diagram with the labeled valves as I was talking about. You'll find those stickers as I was saying earlier in the video there. Uh, just You can follow it from the back on how to winterize and de-winterize the unit itself. I just wanted to point that out for you. Uh, but if you're planning a trip to go on right away after you pick up this unit, uh, as it's freezing cold out right now. It's tops of 22 was our high today. And we all know that water freezes at 32. Um, if you'd like it dewinterized upon pickup, uh, you can ask your salesman and they'll be able to help you out with that. Now with these beds, the beds here, you can lift up on it access underneath of it. Now to put it all the way down, lift all the way up, and it'll come all the way out, down. All right, so these do come outwards. So you're able to do that. Okay. So surprisingly, these 
these still have little legs on them, but should be fine. It kind of hangs out over there. The opposite, the opposite side. Now you have a very large bed to sleep on. Or if your uh, pinions get a little too hot, push them on their side and you can push your stuff on your side. And you have two singles. Uh, you have your blinds. Now your blinds can also fit behind so you can have your maximum privacy and black out as you wish to give or keep everything nice and tight and closed so it doesn't move about. Um, and then we have our front window blind, which goes all the way around. You can just follow your snaps, as you'll see in the attached video. Now the front end is just a little bit different again, um, but it's the same concept. Um, the kitchen also has the same max air vent that's above it. I missed that. That's in front of the Dometic air conditioner, which is right there. That also has your heat pump mode. So it's the same function as the bathroom. Now, other than that, you have your touch panel here, touch panel there, there, and in the bathroom. So that's your four touch panels plus your one touch here and your phone app. And I believe that's everything in this unit. This personally is the first unit of this style that I have demoed. So if there's a little discrepancy, please forgive me. Um, any other questions, you can feel free to give us a call here, press forward for service as far as technical. Now, as far as specifications, feel free to give your salesman a call. Got it. All right, so this is our chassis here. We have all of our steering wheel controls, our left and right turn signals. Pull back for high beams. We're going to turn it on. Now, when you turn it on, it's going to automatically retract the uh, step if you had it uh, extended. You got our left, right, push forward for high beams. Pull them back to flash. Now, this has HIDs. So it's going to sound like an actual wiper going off when you put on your high beams. We have our lights off, uh, marker lights, headlights, and then auto. This here gives us our fog lights. This here gives us our brightness of our dash. We have our mirror controls on the left <coughs> side here. Uh, spin up to either left or right to move either mirror and then you can move the knob up down left right to adjust the mirror. Our driver uh, controls has the auto windows. Auto window down, not up. We have our lock and unlocks. That also locks our main entry door. We have our um, drive mode so we can change our eco, slippery, tow haul or just normal. And then we have our traction control. Uh, we have our gear select, so down there, you can put it all the way down on manual, and then you can push up and down to change the gears, or you can just put it in drive and it will drive. We have our uh, climate controls here, fan speed on the left, hot and cold on the right, uh, max AC is all the way to the left, max defrost is clicked all the way to the right, vice versa. We have our uh, little guy here, so you got your face, your feet, defrost, recirculation, on and off for it, and our mirror heat. Um, we have our auto start stop, so turning it off, it won't uh, turn off on you at a stop after you've gone for a little bit of a drive. Right now we're inside, so I just turned off the, the coach, so she might beep for a minute. We have our main display here, so we have our volume, our off on, 
in which there we go we got radio the sources of players. and there are tunes um we have our display off and on so if that type of thing bothers you while going down the road you can change it to such uh you have all your basic controls here your settings here uh, this whole screen is touch screen, so you can touch it to see everything. You can zoom in, zoom out with pinching. Um, you can zoom out like such, find your waypoint, 3D, 2D, and more. I'd highly recommend reading the Ford chassis manuals on that. Uh, we got some 12 volt outlets here. There's a 12 volt outlet on the dash with the USB input there. Also, there's a USB on the bottom of the dash here as well. We have our four ways. Um, if we go back, we have our little house here to go all the way back. You have your audio, so you can have all your sources, Bluetooth, Sirius, FM, AM. We have our phone, so you can add your phone and do all your phone calling. We have our nav. And then we have apps, so you can find more apps. You got Sirius Travel Link. You can add your phone off of here on your add device. And then we have settings for everything. And then you can swipe to get to secondary. And you can download the Ford Pass Connect on your phone. So you can link your phone to your chassis here. So the I believe it possibly might have auto start on that feature. I'm not 100%. It kind of changes every model to model. So that's something you could look into. Um, And that's kind of like the basics of what goes on on your dash here. I definitely read more on your manual so you can be better informed than I am because I have to kind of remember every model and it's all blur anymore. Uh, up top here, we have our light controls for our map lights. We have our door light. So if that's in the center, when you go ahead and open up the door, it has the light come on, then you close it or you can have it full on or full off. Um, this does have passenger side airbags, which are indicated up here if they're on or off. Um, there is overhead storage. I don't recommend putting anything that ro is rolly up here. Maybe just a couple maps or such. This does not uh, hold a lot of weight, so don't put anything nice and heavy up here. Uh, we got our blinds with our mirrors. Um, and you do have a glove compartment. And inside the glove compartment here, we have our, this here is to fill our gas tank. And we have all of our manuals and everything in this pamphlet right here. And then you got some extras going on in there. And that pretty much covers this whole unit.